You're watching clips, the best moments from our live streams every Monday and Friday. Don't miss out. Watch it. Who does the who did the writer strike ultimately benefit? And I said, uh, no, no, it really it really benefited first the studios and then the the elites that are already there in the Correct. writers. Correct. Everyone else, the little man got fucked over. Correct. Now this is happening. Mm -hmm. Would you care to to talk about the the, the Disney layoffs and what this and what this means and mm -hmm. you know what what it could snowball into? Yeah, I mean, look, because the fact is, previous Disney layoffs had been announced. They were announced back in you know in in uh, in Chapek's days. Like he was announcing that he was planning to fire people. If you call in the heady days of Bob Chapek, right? He was announcing that he and he was attacked in Hollywood. You know, ah, you know he's mismanaging company. Then he gets ousted for mysterious, still mysterious reasons. FTX, mysterious reasons, right? He's still ousted. New York Times did a whole, you know. 10 page analysis of it and still couldn't answer why he was ousted, right? Well, whatever, he was ousted. And then, you know, then we, we've got Bob Iger coming back in and then just implementing his plan. The very layoffs that he announced, you know, he ended up doing. Uh, but they were announced and it was uh, several thousand people, if I recall. So they were given six months advance notice that there's going to be some changes coming. So, you know, that got Hollywood ready for this. The fact that 300 people are fired essentially without any warning to the industry that this kind of shakeup is coming means that there's financial issues that are coming to a head. Look at the timing as well. I always say timing is not a coincidence. This happens one week in advance of the end of Disney's fiscal quarter, uh, fiscal year, right? Uh, my understanding is Disney fiscal year is begins on October 1st. So they've looked at their numbers. They had to get this done. I'm sure some people's contracts were linked to the fiscal year. So this was their moment to pull the plug and they did it, but they did it without any warning, which is new for Disney on this scale. I mean, firing this person, that person, that's not newsworthy unless there's someone significant, right? But 300 people across the board. And interesting enough, as one of my Patreon subscribers mentioned, uh, and I think their analysis is correct. And that's a good thing about my Patreon, people giving their commentary in the comments, which is often makes me think, oh, yeah. Not I just normal people, but also uh, uh, mm -hmm. industry people that are uh, oh. in your Patreon. And we actually have working screenwriters who, right. who are there and they're giving like, well, so, and so it's like, it's like real people. So it's so, really great insight guys. The interesting thing is if we look at who are the people being let go, and this will answer some of the people's comments that I'm seeing floating by about wokery in Hollywood and all that. Mm. It is people in HR, people in the legal departments. Uh, there's very specific administrative groups like that, which I think many of us who've worked in corporations know that tends to be at least in the last decade has, have become the politicized environments. HR particularly, you know, there's always the running joke that HR is where, where the school moms go to, to, you know, to scold you. And now they get, and right. then they have, and whatever the politics of the day are, they used to feel powerful over you. Uh, HR is the most feared department because, you know, they're, they're like, they're like, they're like the Spanish Inquisition, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what they are, right? This is a Latino channel. We know the history, Spanish Inquisition. That's what they are, right? And, and we so, just fired our HR department, uh, Mexican Iron Man. We just couldn't take it anymore. No HR here. He's, he is, you know, he, you know, we love you, Mikey. Ultimate, he's the ultimate inquisitor, right? But God bless him, my fellow Sufi. So, yeah, so it's, but yeah, so, and legal departments, uh, they are, you know, they go with the, having been a former lawyer myself, I'm no longer a practicing lawyer, but in having been a former lawyer, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, lawyers are very cautious. They are always follow the flock of wherever society is going based on judiciary rulings. And since, a lot of the direction of the judiciary for much of the last 20 years has been in a very progressive direction, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when, mm -hmm. you know, when we were, we're Generation X, when we were in the 80s, we couldn't have imagined that gay marriage would be legal on a constitutional level Supreme Court. It has happened. And for many people, that's a very good thing, right? But that, if that's the direction society has been going. Maybe there's been some pullback to, in the last maybe two years on certain, you know, political issues. But generally, that's the direction that lawyers are going. I went to law school at Cornell, you know, and already, you know, you could see the seeds of the progressive politics in 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 the class, right? And so lawyers tend to be largely more, at least Hollywood lawyers, tend to be largely more progressive right in their politics because that's their training and that's what they went up law school learning the, the recent rulings and the trend of the of, of history right you know uh, and so they they tend to be more they tend to be more progressive not all of them but tend to be and so when you have the legal departments being let go you're having the hr departments being let go that's very specific it's almost as if you're getting rid of people that you think are going to be a problem 
for the changes that you're going to have to implement whether you like it or not. Because, again, we've fallen out of the airplane. The ground is coming. If you don't open that parachute, you are going to die. And there's people who are saying don't open the parachute because it's not politically the right thing to do, right? Okay. And so you might want to let those people go and let them fall to earth and then open your parachute, right? That's the analogy I'll give. And, and that was a point that a, a Patreon subscriber said. It's like, look, look at who's being let go. There is, there is, there is an intent behind this. And I think that's true. The, the equalizer layoffs at Disney, yet Iger still claims success. Well, I mean, it's a fair point to raise. But look, I mean, we know what this guy is. What's he, I mean, this guy is, this guy is a politician. I mean, does a politician ever say that they're wrong or they made a mistake? Has any politician ever admitted in history that they made a mistake and they backed the wrong thing? They only do that if they need to switch the party because they have some other agenda, right? But generally, they don't admit from a place of sincerity that they made a mistake. I mean, this guy has been making mistakes since he got on board. Uh, you know, he's been... He's, in my opinion, he's been the wrong guy for Disney since he came on board because he lacks any vision. He just remakes things, right? You know, Eisner took creative risks, his predecessor, right? This guy doesn't. So this guy was always going to end badly because you need a place like Disney has to always be not on the edge politically. It has to be on the edge creatively. It has to be trying things that people want, right? And he doesn't have the guts to do that. So now he's cleaning, he's trying to clean up the mess he created. All right, so we got Neil, a uh, member of the channel. I have some friends in the industry as writers, and they tell me the good ones are avoiding uh, Lucasfilm. It's hard to support a studio that tosses you aside like a pair of socks. My friend's words, not mine. Fair enough. So I actually responded to this in the chat, but I'll say for everyone here. Uh, so thank you for saying that, Neil. You're not wrong. Uh, but this is also not new. I know that people are saying it too. Uh, you know, I I have if those who know on my Patreon. I I featured those people. I have good friends who have written movies for Kathleen Kennedy that have not been made within the Star Wars universe. Who shared with me a lot of insight as to dealing with her and the system there, right? Uh, and I, you know, so if you go to Patreon, you hear some of those stories, right? But so yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, and, but this is also, as I said in the chat, this is not new. Ridley Scott said this publicly about maybe five years ago. You know, uh, he, he you know, at a time when Kathleen Kennedy was still being perceived by Hollywood as the power player of Lucasfilm. Uh -huh, and he's, uh -huh. he's Ridley Scott, if you remember, said, you know, they're never going to hire me because I'm going to bring it in under budget, you know, and do it right. That this was this was this was when this is when the solo disaster happened, when they Oof. let the directors of solo be released and brought Ron Howard yeah. in after 80, 90 percent of the movie had already been shot. Ridley Scott said, what is this garbage? I mean, if you hired me, the movie would be done correctly on time under budget, but you're not going to hire me. He said that publicly. He says other sophisticated filmmakers don't want to deal with that. And that has been something that Ms. Kennedy has, unfortunately, a culture she created, which Mr. Favreau is trying to get people out of. But like you fans that are not convinced that anything is changing, there are filmmakers that are convinced. They're like, I don't want to waste my time on this. You show me something that works, that everyone's happy with, and, I'll th and that the process was good and my colleagues aren't complaining about, then I'll think about it. And that's the sad legacy that he has to unravel. It's possible that Disney went so woke due to Bob Weiger, uh, Iger's buying spree that needed ESG loans and maybe FTX. It's very plausible because, you know, the the pivotal thing that's underlying the point you're making, c which is a good point, and I've said it on my Patreon, which is that Bob Iger is not inherently woke. He's just a politician. He's going to whatever thinks is going to work for him, mm -hmm. right? And while when this was the official narrative of the industry and of the banking industry and of the political system, he mm -hmm. went with it, right? And then society changed. And he is now trying to scramble to pull the company out of this hole of a bad ideological choice that he made because he's not a visionary. He mm. follows the flock, right? right? And so the flock has gone off a cliff. Now the company's gone off of a cliff, and so we have these things. So I'm sure economic factors of, of finance and, you know, I've talked about my theories on FTX. Uh, I still retain those theories as something. There's a hidden hole there from FTX. I think there's enough mm -hmm. circumstantial evidence that something shady happened about FTX in this company. Whatever. But FTX, as we know, was backed by various politicians, right, mm -hmm. in, in the Democratic Party. And, you know, so there were agendas involved in that. So, yeah, this is a very plausible scenario you're saying, Seaman.